Another day, another selection of five classic games reviewed in aconelectron.co.uk's Five Games, Five Minutes. Spooksville is Blue Ribbon's attempt at graphic adventure on the budget label, and unfortunately it doesn't quite work. The instructions are all over the place. Firstly, they tell you your objective is to find a missing spell book, then later on suddenly they say that you need to find a ring and a scroll. Then finally, they give a list of what objects in the game exist and what they do. Most of the fun in this type of game is actually about the player finding this information out himself. In each room, there are ropes, patrolling baddies, and a sort of ghost or fireball thing that heads towards you. You have the very welcome ability to be able to fire at these, although you need to hold down the fire and the direction key to do this properly, which is a bit odd. The game feels gigantic, and apart from the baddies, most rooms are completely empty. They also take quite a while just to cross. If you're a real fan of graphic adventures, then you may want to check this out, but otherwise I'd steer clear. Shuffle is a collection of simple, and not so simple, sliding block puzzles for the Electron. There are colourful low-res pictures, and less colourful high-res pictures. In order of difficulty, you can choose to recreate a picture from letters and numbers, right through to complicated spirals. You can also set a difficulty level and choose whether or not you want to have dividing lines. If you set a low difficulty, you'll see the completed puzzle being smoothly shuffled. If you set a high one, all the blocks are randomly scattered. Also, you can play the game with two different control systems, either by moving the blocks around, as is usual, or by moving the blank space, as some people may prefer. It would be difficult to squeeze any more options in there, and with the wide variety of pictures on offer, this is a very engaging game. The one thing it's missing, which seems obvious to me, is the ability to load in your own pictures. Mango is a nice arcade maze game, in which you're under attack from a steadily increasing number of nasties. The blocks that make up the walls of the maze can be both disintegrated by you and the nasties, or hurled around by you alone. You need to position Mr. Mango so that he's lined up with a block and an approaching menace. You can then hurl the block and crush it. There are quite a few games of this type on the Electron, and all of them are actually pretty good. There's nothing in Mango to really pick fault with compared to the others. It's a hair-raising game calling for some super-fast reactions, and the more you play it, the finer those reactions become. The game continues forever, of course, and I've reached dealing with 12 nasties at the same time before. You always only fight four at a time though, with replacements being born as you take the others out. Although the sprites are simple, the game really excels through its addictiveness. You'll keep coming back to this for a few minutes, time and time again. In 1983, I don't know if the word croak had the connotations of death that it does now, but if it did, they were appropriate. Croaker is a variant of Frogger, in which you need to hop a frog across a busy motorway and then onto logs and pond life. The goal is to jump into one of the five caverns at the top of the screen. Occupy all five and you proceed to the next level, with a busier road and more aggressive pond life. Croker is a more difficult version than many, because the playing area is small and feels somewhat cluttered. The action is also much faster than you might be expecting. Timing the final two jumps is very difficult indeed, and particularly the jump on the very first cavern on the left. Hence, your little frogs will probably be croaking every 30 seconds or so as you struggle to complete even the first screen. Apart from the difficulty level, the game isn't particularly bad. The sprites are colourful and everything has an arcade punch to it. I prefer the Acorn Soft version Hopper over Croker, but the two are so different that perhaps that's an unfair comparison. Orvida's Ain't Pet was the first release from Newcastle-based company Tynesoft. It's a collection of three sub-games featuring a character called Oz, a bricklayer, working, drinking, and quote, living alright, unquote, in Germany. The sub-games are all as dire as one another, and each is preceded by a set of difficult-to-read instructions and a sort of scrolling demo that has got nothing to do with anything. In the first sub-game, you need to construct a wall whilst avoiding falling trowels. The obstructions along the wall cannot be avoided, and Oz, obviously being a complete idiot, insists on walking along the wall he is building, so if you go any more than one level up the wall and then move left or right, you fall off it. The second sub-game is just as terrible. You have to collect Dale cans whilst avoiding German barmaids, who appear completely at random. Finally, you have to pick your way home through darkened streets by remembering a maze. Make it or die trying, and then you are then returned to the beginning. 
there's not even a game over message or a high score table. Or Vida's own pet? That's a game playing like shite, kidder. <laughs>